Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? What's up? And welcome back to the Zolian Podcast. Today, we're going to keep it audio only just because I got some technical issues. I'm trying to finish the Friday video that was supposed to go out, but the software crashed on me. So I'm trying to see what I can do about that. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, we're just going to bootleg it the old-fashioned way, right back at it again. Um, it is what it is. We're moving forward. I have a topic I want to talk about today, and that is about culture, creating a, or rather race. Let's talk about race. No, not like that. We're talking about creating races in your fantasy novel, whatever series you're working on. Maybe you're working on a space fantasy. Maybe you're working on a sci-fi. I don't care what it is. One of the things I'm working on is a side project for me. Is kind of like a personal generator on a spreadsheet where I can create um, certain criterias where it'll be the foundation of whatever culture or race you want to make. Um, this is a personal thing I'm making for myself just because at some point you have you have your own taste about what you're trying to make and what you're trying to create. And so I try to now go outside of my comfort zone, go outside of my box and create things that are um, not in my wheelhouse, things that are different. So it keeps things fresh for me and it keeps me writing interesting things. I think that's a secret about writing is being able to be outside of your comfort zone. And that means creating unique types of races and groups of people and, and, and worlds that you normally wouldn't make on your own, like from scratch, right? You have a vision of what you normally wanna make and there's a theme that kind of connects everything together. I think a great challenge, for me at least, a good writing challenge is creating something, an environment, a background that doesn't have your core, uh, I would say, your fingerprints all over it, your DNA all over it, if, 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 if I may say so. Uh, <laughs> it's a little, a little sus to say it like that, but you get what I'm saying. Something that isn't something you normally would make. I think there's something interesting about that. I think there's something to that. I think there's something valuable about that, being able to create a different type of group of people. So for example, I'll give you a good example. Let's say you make a world, all right? It's a barbaric world where horrible things happen and it's awful. Well, something that's probably not in your wheelhouse, if that's something you make all the time, would be a group of people who are scientists, like a group of a race of people who are technologically uh, savvy as far as biology is concerned. They're able to do great things with medicine, right? They make great uh, changes and advancements in medicine, and they're a very secluded group of people. I think that stands out in your world, right? A very small group of people who are isolationists. They don't want to go out there and deal with any of that stuff. They have their own little, you know, world within this world. And I think that's fascinating. That's something that would actually be uh, interesting to write, right? And I think there's something to that, writing things outside of your box. And so for me, I'm working on something that will create, you know, uh, a new foundation for every time I want to make something. So you can always put, of course, you're always going to put your own spin on things, your own, your own fingerprints on things. You're going to have your hands in the pie. You're going to have your own DNA in it or whatever uh, have you. But having a starting point where it's not something you normally would do, I think is fun. And being able to just pick a random one is challenging and interesting and fun and exciting. And it keeps the fire stoking, okay? Anything that keeps the fire stoking for your writing is good, unless it's a crime. Uh, it is good, okay? I think if you if you have to change locations of where you're writing to keep things interesting for you, to keep you focused and keep you doing, uh, uh, being fresh and not complacent, I think do it. Change the location where you write. If changing the medium you use, like instead of typing, you have to write by hand the next day, and then the next day you have to text on your phone, I think you should do that. Whatever it is that makes it interesting for you, that keeps you going and keeps you going longer and faster, that sounded different than how I thought it would sound, do it, okay? I'm just saying, figure it out for yourself. For me right now is doing this spreadsheet where I'm making different kinds of, uh, it's, it's a little something for me, right? It's a little tool for me. And I'm putting different types of criteria in there. So for example, uh, I have a point system. And it helps me uh, understand the culture, right? Understand the, the group of people, the environment, right? So for example, 
uh, I'll give you an example. So, for example, the group of people, uh, they may have uh, one one aspect could be their technology. I have like a stat that says technology, and that covers like their advancement so far. So, uh, in my mind, a five out of ten would be something along the lines of where we are, right? Like this is like you know before the internet. I would say pre-internet, like 1995 to 1999. I would say, you know, uh, generally speaking, without internet, right? People without internet. The general public weren't really using internet. There was AOL, but that's not everybody. Most people didn't really get on the computer like that. Um, and so uh, I think that's a five out of 10, right? Whereas the Wild West would be probably two or three out of 10, or maybe three out of 10 would be, that's kind of fair. And then two out of 10 would be something to the effect of like, uh, uh, back in the day where uh, the the uh, the ships came from England and they came here, you know, and they it was the colonial England, right? This is this is the colonial era, right? Uh, before America signed the Declaration of Independence, before the founding fathers did that, before the war, or before all that stuff, right? That's around the two, and then one would be like we're talking, I mean. <laughs> We're talking just out there, just the jungle, basically, okay? That's what we're talking about, all right? And so I think there's something to that. Having that aspect in there really helps me, inform me where we are, right, as a culture in that in that world, like timeline-wise, right? Uh, you know, and then eight would be futuristic whatever, right? Like super futuristic society. And then 10 would be just like, you know, uh, technology and, and magic are kind of indistinguishable like to, to us it looks like magic you know what i mean yeah it looks like straight up magic wizards are moving their hands and stuff is happening and we don't understand it and so that's where i am when it comes to like these special like points right whereas another aspect could be physiognomy uh they're not very genic to us right they're very dysgenic so maybe they're more of a monstrous race to us uh you know more uh of a of a of a look right so maybe they look like gargoyles or something, right? Okay, that that would probably be pretty low on the on the genic scale, uh, versus like, oh, these are like angelic looking people. So they're just probably gonna be like way up there, like nine or ten, right? And so there's that aspect to it as well. And then there's other aspects like culture. How toxic is the culture? And then the lower the points, the more toxic the culture. The higher the points, the more I would say. Uh, I would say the more utopian it is, right? So the higher you go, the better it is. Then you have government, then you have all sorts of different aspects to it, right? And so I think that helps for me understand on a, it translate, the, the points translate to things that actually exist and, and the differences in how to write that society, right? It gives me a consistent foundation to go back to so I don't go out there and leave what the point of this whole culture was, right? Even if the culture advances in some ways in the story, it's never going to be too far far off the, the the foundation. And I think there's something to writing a it's like it's like the magic system where you have rules and you don't veer too far from them, if at all, right? So for me, I created a tool. It's a tool that's helpful for me. Maybe you find your own tool. Maybe you find your own system to make your own stuff for yourself. Maybe you maybe you don't need that. Maybe you already have your own style of writing that you don't even need to do any of that stuff. That's fine too. But for me, I find it fascinating to have these compartmentalized portions in order to understand the culture that I'm writing about because I have a lot of different cultures. I'm, I'm a big... Now, a lot of people are talking about quality over quantity. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, as time goes forward... I personally am a big fan of, you know, leaving behind areas, leaving, like telling a story that's one and done sometimes, telling a story that lasts a long time over a course of time and walking away, right? Being okay with walking away from a world. I think there's a, there's, there is a value in that because you're telling a story and you're completing a story and you're moving on. In order to do that, you need to have more places more environments more culture so you don't have to keep building on the same thing over and over and over again because sometimes readers don't read all the other stuff you want to have you know maybe you want to write a completely different world a different universe and that's fine too there's nothing wrong with that for you i would always say 
figure out what values you have, right? What are your core values about what you're trying to write, about what you're trying to do? What are the goals you have? And write to those goals, right? If you want to build a single universe that you know you're never going to leave and you are, you are, you don't care what happens, you just, you want that audience to be stuck in that universe and that's that and only one group, one story, one group of people, one thing and you're okay with the continuity of that, you're able to keep up with that continuity of that and, and you'll never have issues with that as you age, then keep that up. There's nothing wrong with that. For me, I'm a big, I'm big on being a little bit more expansive. Time moves forward, stories end. I start a story, I'm in the middle of a story, I end a story, I move on. Sometimes there's an overarching story that goes on and that's fine. Sometimes there isn't and that's okay too. I like completing projects. I'm a big fan of completing projects. Sometimes I tell a story about a race of people it begins, it, be, it start, it's, it's in the middle, it's at the end, and I never talk about them again. I never return to that world again because I want to finish, I want a finished product. I want a done, a one and done product. I want to put out something that you can read one time. It's not that long or it's not long at all. You read it and you enjoy it. You tell me what you liked, you tell me what you didn't like, what I learned from it, and I will be able to advance my own writing from that feedback, right? Being able to tone my you know, tone my skill, right? Craft my skill a certain way. You're forging a blade when you're writing this stuff, right? You're really, you really are. Writing is a skill. It's a muscle. You are toning yourself. You are trying to hone in on what works and leave what doesn't work, right? And the audience that you have that you want reading your book is going to require you to be a little bit more, uh, you know, in, you have to be a little bit more, uh, you know, paying attention. You're gonna have to pay a little bit more. You're gonna have to be a little bit more uh, attentive, right, to these details, these nuances, as you get better and better at writing. And I think that there's an aspect to that that's very um, important. Being able to build that intuitiveness, right? And at some point, it will become intuitive. It will become a second nature, a second skill, a sixth sense, if you will. Um, but at the beginning of this journey, you need to have that thing as a muscle built up before you're able to lift even heavier things if you know what i mean and so that's my point that's why i'm doing what i'm doing right now it's very it's been fun it's been enjoyable i i have a good time and uh, that's about it let me know what you think about that have a great time god bless you see you later